Hello students, today we will learn about mounting in Hanau articulator, the procedure involved and how it is different from the mounting in a regular mean value articulator. So before learning the procedure, it is first important for everyone to know the different parts of a Hanau articulator. As it is seen in the image, it is very well mentioned. Uh, so we can know about where the mounting plate is fixed, where is the upper member, what is an incisal pin, there is an incisal guide, also a platform lock screw, there are centric locks, condyler guidances, protrusive inclinations and Bennett angles. So all this comprises the major parts of an Hanau articulator. So the procedures that are involved in mounting in Hanau articulator are number one zeroing of the articulator, mounting of the maxillary cast, mounting of the mandibular cast and few general considerations. So before we start with the procedure per se and before the articulation we should make sure that the articulator is checked for the following factors which would include that the movable surfaces of the articulator should move freely without any hindrance. The incisal pin of the articulator should be tightly fitted at the level of darkest marking of the pin and the condyler track in the condyler guidance should be inclined to 30 degrees. So these are the prerequisites that one needs to see before we start with the mounting of the articulator. So now moving into a zeroing of the articulator, this basically means that before we start with the actual process of mounting, all those values that can be manually changed in the articulator, they have to be at their base value. So that is why the name zeroing. Now the Bennett angle that is normally calculated and set according to the vertical axis of the condyler guidance, uh, but in the Hanau articulator, since this is semi-adjustable, we set the uh, Bennett angle at 30 degrees. So this is the zeroing of Bennett angle which is also known as the horizontal condylar guidance whereas the incisal pin it should be positioned to touch the zero point in the incisal guide table and the lateral wings are also set at zero marking. So these two values when we set at 30 degree in uh, your Bennett angle and 0 degree in incisal pins, both of this comprises the zeroing of the articulator. For the mounting of the maxillary cast, first an orientation jaw relation and a phase board transfer is a must. After recording the orientation jaw relation, the following steps are carried out. The phase bow with its bite fork is attached to the maxillary cast as it is and then the earpiece of the phase bow which was attached to the patient's ear is now shifted into the roll pin of the articulator. This will transfer the posterior reference point. So after attaching the posterior reference points, the anterior reference point should be positioned by making the orbital indicator which is attached to the upper member of the articulator, it contacts the orbital pointer of the face bow. Once the face bow support is attached, the upper member of the articulator can be opened as shown in the picture. The upper member is opened completely so that it does not interfere with the placement of the cast. The face bow is stabilized in this position with the help of a face bow support. Then the maxillary cast should be placed in slurry water for at least 5 minutes for better adhesion of the cast to the mounting plaster. So then a relatively thick mix of dental plaster is mixed and placed over the maxillary cast. Now if the cast is indexed with a remounting plate then separating medium should be applied over the maxillary cast. So once the upper member of the articulator is closed and the mounting plaster is contoured to obtain a good finish. This is how we mount a maxillary cast. Now the mandibular cast is always mounted after recording the tentative vertical and centric jaw relations. The articulator with the mounted maxillary cast is inverted to aid in the mounting of mandibular cast. The maxillary occlusal rim is placed on the maxillary cast. The mandibular occlusal rim is positioned over the man maxillary occlusal rim using the centric relation records as shown in the second picture. Then the mandibular cast is placed over the lower occlusal rim. It should be soaked in slurry water before mounting. After which the mandibular cast is attached to the lower member of the articulator using a dental plaster. Now the further procedures they are similar that was described in the mounting of maxillary cast itself.
There are few general considerations that have to be taken care while we mount the articulators in Hanau articulator. First of which would be after the articulation, the anterior teeth are arranged and anterior aesthetic trial is completed. So the incisal guide table is programmed on the articulator with the aid of arranged teeth according to the phonetics and aesthetics of the patient. The articulator should be maintained to avoid errors in toolings that would produce discrepancies in occlusion. Excess plaster on the articulator should be cleaned. The moving part should be lubricated periodically. Excess oil should not be present in the articulator. After articulation, the articulator should be wiped dry to avoid any kind of rusting. The articulator should not be stored in a closed chamber at least for, for an hour after articulation to prevent corrosion. So this was all about how to do a mounting in a Hanau articulator. Uh, well, I have explained maximum of it in a gist. You all can refer the textbook for a greater understanding. For any doubts, you can ask in the comment section below. Thank you.